In the previous section, we talked about dependent events, and that's when uh, we learned that on a later stage, it's impacted by what happened previously. When you're looking at dependent events, the probability we calculate is called a conditional probability. So that means then the probability of an event occurring at a later stage is impacted given by what happened on a previous stage. When you go to calculate a conditional probability, the notation for that would be, it's the capital P for probability, and then inside the parentheses, you would write E2, and then a vertical bar up and down, so this represents the word given, and then E1. So if these E1 and E2 are events, then the probability of E2 occurring, given that event E1 has happened, is called a conditional probability and is written like this. So verbally how we say this is we would say the probability of E2 given E1. And what this is implying is that uh, event 1 occurred so then we're going to find the probability that event 2 has happened then. So let's kind of see how uh, the conditional probability influences how we calculate a probability. So let's assume that you're just looking at a deck of cards. Okay, so we have our, our deck of cards over here. So for the first question, let's determine the probability that the card is a diamond. Okay, so they've got all these diamonds down here. There are 13 of them out of the 52 cards. So the probability that the card is a diamond will be 13 out of 52, or 1 fourth. Now as a separate question, let's determine the probability that the card is a diamond given that the card is red. So what's happening here is that at this point in time, you're finding the probability that the card is a diamond given, okay, so that's where this vertical line is drawn, given that you know that the card is red. So at this point in time, this is giving you kind of additional information about the card you're looking at. So if you go back to refer to the deck of cards, you're no longer looking at all 52 cards. You're given, you know for sure that the card that you have in front of you is a red card. So at that point in time, we're only looking at these cards. Now, given that I'm only looking at red cards, now we're going to find the probability that the card is a diamond. So at this point in time, our sample space shrank. Right? You're only looking at these 26 cards, and out of these 26 cards, how many of them satisfy the criteria about being a diamond? It would be these 13. So at this point in time, since you know the card is red, you're only looking at the 26 red cards. Out of those cards, 13 of them satisfy being a diamond. So the probability that the card is a diamond, given that you know the card is red, would be one half. That's a conditional probability. So you know that uh, the sample space is restricted based upon the given information. And then once you take into account your restriction, then you're going to look at how many of them satisfy this criteria. Let's take a look at another example to maybe kind of clarify what's going on here. So a family will have three children, and assuming boys and girls are equally likely, let's determine the probability the family has three girls. So at this point in time, I'm going to sketch out a, a tree diagram. Okay, so there are going to be three children, so it's three stages. Hopefully at this point in time, we're getting really good at sketching these trees, determining how many stages there are, how many outcomes there are on each particular stage, and then overall how many outcomes there are as a result of the experiment. Alright, so two options here, two here, two here. There's going to be eight options total. So let's find the probability that the family has three girls. Alright, so at this point in time, I'm uh, looking at my entire sample space, all A outcomes, how many of them satisfy being all girls, it would be these lower branches down here, so girl, 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 
there is only one way that can happen. Alright, that seems pretty straightforward. Now let's look at this next one. What's the probability that you uh, have three girls if you know at least one of the children is a girl? This is given information. You are given, you are told that you have at least one of the children being a girl. So at this point in time, we have to think about how does that impact who we are allowed to look at. So at least one of the children has to be a girl. First off, let's just look at who satisfies that. So this first outcome does not satisfy that, right? That would be boy, boy, boy. That does not satisfy at least one child being a girl. So in this outcome, we have at least one girl. We have at least one girl here, here. All of these guys have at least one girl. There are seven possibilities of being at least one girl. So notice that this information dictates the denominator. It restricts how many outcomes you're even allowed to look at. Once you know the outcomes you're, you're allowed to look at, then let's count how many of them satisfy this first criteria. So, so out of the ones that I have starred right here, how many of them satisfy having three girls? Oh, it would just be this last branch again, right? So there's one way that I can have three girls out of the seven possibilities where there's at least one girl. This is a conditional probability where this count gets shifted based upon the given information. Let's try this again. So what's the probability that you have three girls given the youngest child's a girl? So again, I'm only allowed to look at the outcomes in the sample space that satisfy this criteria. Because I'm given, I know that the youngest child is a girl. So which one satisfy the youngest being a girl? So if I consider this to being the oldest and then out here being the youngest, this one has the youngest being a girl. Uh, this one right here has the youngest being a girl. Uh, this one right here. And this one right here. So there are four outcomes where the youngest child is a girl. Out of those four outcomes, how many of them satisfy all three of them being girls? Only one of them. And so we're seeing then how and when we're doing a conditional probability, the information that we're given then dictates how big the denominator is. Then once I know what outcomes I'm even allowed to look at, then we count how many satisfy that other condition we're looking for. So formally, how, what we're doing here is when we're computing a conditional probability, so the probability that event E2 happens given E1 happens, can be determined by... Alright, so in the denominator, we're going to find the number of events that are satisfied by event 1. Okay, so the given information, that we, and the given we always list after this vertical line, the given dictates the denominator. So just as a reminder for this out this notation, this represents the number of elements in event one. Once I know then who am I allowed to look at, then my numerator would be the number of elements that are in event one, which they have to be in event one because those are the only ones I'm allowed to look at, and they have to simultaneously satisfy the uh, event that we're kind of interested in at this point. So what this looks like in this previous question is that we first counted how many of them had the youngest child being a girl. And then out of that, we looked at then, okay, the youngest child had to be a girl and they also had to have three girls and we counted the number of ways that, that happened. Okay, so then this numerator up here, what this is representing is that this is the number of elements. in both 
event one and an event two.